Yes, boys, we are back for another UFC breakdown on prediction video. Today, we'll be breaking down UFC Jacksonville. Corey Sanhagen taking our brawl of fun in the main event of the evening. But before we do that, though, UFC 291, great out of fights, great out of bets, 5.39 units of profit. Um, Boys, this new strategy I find... I've been implementing a new strategy the past three weeks. You know, I came back to YouTube about four weeks ago. But the first two, like two weeks before I came back to YouTube, I was researching betting strategies. I put in about 30 hours. I'm not even exaggerating. About 30 hours of, you know, research and how to beat these bookies. And I kind of just finessed them, really. And this strategy I found, man. I've got about five pages of notes on just strategies and how to like outsmart these books from the YouTube videos I've watched, from the blogs I've watched, uh, from you know big batters and like batters that are very successful. And it's not about just picking like batting you the guys you think are gonna win. As you can see by the Euros Manage bet and the Derek Lewis bet, I was on an island right there. Everyone was on Matthew Semmelsberger. Everyone was on uh, Rogerio De Lima, and I was on Derek Lewis and Euros Manage for value plays. There's no possible way their opponent should ever be minus two ten favorites over them. And boys, this new strategy I find. If you want to stay up to date with my bets, follow me, Sicky Dogs MMA. We're gonna make it four weeks in a row. And we're gonna we're gonna consistently beat these bookies with this new strategy. I find I'm telling you guys the research I put in is gonna be a game changer for me. It really is. So like I said, if you want to stay tuned, follow me Sicky Dolls MMA on Twitter. But without further ado, guys, let's make some cash this weekend and enjoy some fights. But yeah, let's get right down into break time video, boys. And our first for the night is going to be a banger, Ode Osborne taking on Asu Almabayev. Asu Almabayev, 5-0 in his last 5, Ode Osborne 3-2 in his last 5, Ode Osborne coming in about a plus 170 underdog I think, and Asu Almabayev about a minus 193 favourite. I'm going to have to side with the underdog in this matchup, Ode Osborne. If you guys watch the tape on Asu Almabayev, you'll find a massive, massive uh, like telling in this matchup. He looks like he could make 105. He looks like he could make Adam Weight. If the, I think it's Adam Weight 105. I really think that this guy is going to be majorly undersized coming into this matchup against a weight bully in Ude Osborne. You know, Ude Osborne is literally a massive, massive uh, flyweight. You know, he struggles to make the weight. But I would just like to say, I'm going to be taking a dog shot personally by betting him. But it's going to be interesting to see how. How, like how his cardio holds up he doesn't have the best cardio and Asu Amabayev seems to put a good pace with the wrestling but I do see Ode Elsborn stuffing the takedowns and kind of kickboxing his way to a decision win or getting a stoppage quite early in the fight so yeah give me Ode Elsborn by decision the last thing I would just like to say, there's definitely value in Ude Osborne in this matchup. I just would not be laying minus, 130, minus 193 on a UFC debutant. Uh, so yeah, give me Ude Osborne for that value play, boys. And our next fight is going to be Sean Woodson taking on Myron Santos. Sean Woodson, 3-1-1 one one in his last five. Myron Santos, 4-1 in his last five. Uh, Santos coming in with a plus 105 underdog. Sean Woodson, a minus 125 favorite. I was going to play Santos in this matchup, like... Obviously, since I'm in Europe, uh, he's like he came out as a plus two eighty five on Bet Online, and that line has shrunk massively. But unfortunately, boys, I'll not be able to get that plus two eighty five that I wanted. But I'm gonna have to side with Sean Woodson in this matchup. I was just gonna play a value play on Myron Santos because I thought the line would have been wider. But I feel like Sean Woodson has all the uh, capabilities of winning this matchup on the feet with his range, with his distance, and with his boxing. You know, Myron uh, Santos is very impressive. You know, I did do tape on him when uh, the last time Daniel Arguetta fought. Uh, I, I looked at this guy and I was like, I'm really impressed with this guy. He's got some nasty leg kicks, good power, uh, but, and he can mix it up with his takedowns. But I just like the UFC experience of Sean Woodson. He isn't taking this on short notice either, like Myron Santos. He's had a training camp, but a few cancellations. So I'm just going to have to go with Sean Woodson by decision. Uh, maybe it goes under 2.5, but I'm going to be safe with the decision win for Sean Woodson by just outboxing him and outpointing him with that 7 inch reach advantage in this matchup. 
And our next fight of the night is going to be Jake Halley taking on Cody Durden. Jake Halley 4 1 in his last 5. Cody Durden 4 1 in his last 5. Jake Halley about a minus 180 favourite. Cody Durden about a plus 150 underdog. I'm going to have to decide with the favourite in this matchup. I got him about, at about minus 175 for 2.3 units. I feel like he goes to the body so well, which will help massively in this fight. Uh, by going to the body, it will eliminate some of the takedowns from Cody Durden in this matchup. I feel like he'll have that natural underhook by going to the body. You know, Jake Halley in his last performance against Malcolm Gordon uh, at UFC London, he went to the body so well and even he said himself after the matchup, the reason why he goes to the body like that against wrestlers is because of that natural underhook and I do see that being a massive factor in this matchup for Jake Halley. Cody Durden is live though, he could get his wrestling off. Jake Halley was controlled by uh, Alan Nascimento in his UFC debut but Alan Nascimento is a legit massive 135 uh, or so you know I, I don't really take much into that performance against Jake ha uh, for Jake Halley but Cody Durden is live in this spot but I just feel like he will be able to put on the more damage and win this fight as it goes on as Cody Durden does slow down as the fight goes on so yeah give me Jake Halley minus 175 2.3 units on that play boys and our next fight of the night is going to be Billy Quarantillo taking on Damian Jackson or Damon Jackson as Sadiq Yusuf would like to call him. Billy Quarantillo 2-3 and three in his last 5. Damian Jackson 4-1 in his last 5. Billy Quarantillo coming in about a minus 175 favourite. Damian Jackson a plus 140 underdog. I'm going to have to side with the slight favourite in this matchup, Billy Quarantillo. I feel like Billy Quarantillo will be able to stuff the takedowns off Damon, uh, Damian Jackson in this matchup uh, and win the fight as it goes on. You know, Damian Jackson doesn't have the best cardio, not the most durable guy, and I do see that being a massive factor in this matchup, especially against a cardio machine that will never just stop uh, stop coming at you for the whole 15 minutes. But I would just like to say, though, I'm kind of nervous, dude. He's coming back after three months after that brutal KU loss, which I bet against him in. Uh, great bet by me, I can't lie. But yeah, uh, three months after getting brutally flatlined by a flying knee by Edson Barbu. So that is making me nervous and I, I don't really want to play this fight, I'll be honest. I don't really... I'll probably play a live bet if Billy Quarantillo loses that first round because I do see him winning the uh, fight as it goes on. So... Yeah, I do think this is a good style matchup for Billy Q in this fight. And if he gets taken down, he has very good scrambles, which I only see wearing on Damian Jackson's cardio as the fight goes on. So yeah, give me Billy Quarantillo by third round TKO. And our next fight of the night is going to be an absolute banger. Colston Harris taking on Jeremiah Wells. Jeremiah Wells 5-0 in his last 5. Colston Harris 4-1 in his last 5. Colston Harris coming in about a plus 125 underdog. Jeremiah Wells coming in about a minus 150 favourite. Before tape, I was on Jeremiah Wells and I actually had a bet on him. And then I cashed it out and I was like, after tape, I was like, Carlson Harris is going to win this fight, ladies and gentlemen. Carlson, ha Carlson Harris is going to be able to stop Jeremiah Wells from getting on top of him and dominating this fight, in my opinion. Carlson Harris has some wicked BJJ. Even though we haven't really seen it off his back, I do believe off his back it will be good enough to, uh, you know, get Jeremiah Wells. Uh, like, he'll be able to get back up to his feet and get the sweeps uh, if he is on bottom eventually. But even on the feet, boys, I feel like Carlson Harris is the better fighter uh, on the feet specifically. I feel like he'll have the more uh, output, he'll have the better cardio in this matchup. And Jeremiah Wells, man, you know, he was getting dropped left, right, and center by Matthew Samuelsberger and coming back three months after literally getting KO'd about three times in that fight. Don't know how he won that matchup. Uh, I actually bet Matthew Samuelsberger and got robbed. But yeah, Jeremiah Wells, if he lands, dude, you're going out cold. But I feel like Colston Harris will be able to stay safe on the feet and just kind of outstrike him for the majority of this fight. I do see him getting a sub by Darce Choke in this matchup in the second round so yeah give me Carlson Harris to I point him on the feet and if Jeremiah Wells shoots a bad take down I do see Carlson Harris taking advantage of that and latching up a darts choke from that like you know like north side position or when, while he has his back he'll like wrap up his neck and then you know put him on his back and then really attempt that darts choke if you know what I mean so yeah give me a Carlson Harris by uh, darts choke
And our next for tonight is going to be Hanny Barcelos taking on Kyler Phillips. Hanny Barcelos, 2-3 in his last 5. Uh, Kyler Phillips, 3-4-1 in his last 5. Kyler Phillips, about a minus 175 favourite. Hanny Barcelos, about a plus 145 underdog. I'm going to have to side with the favourite in this matchup, Kyler Phillips. This is kind of purely based on age, man. From what we've seen off Hanny Barcelos in his last 4 fights, he hasn't looked the same. I kind of feel bad for him because he was a guy that was on the outside of the rankings for some time and never got his shot to get inside those rankings in his prime but yeah I do see him slowing down for sure uh, from his last four fights and I do see uh, Kyler Phillips being the more dynamic striker on the outside and picking him apart and even implementing some takedowns but I don't see him being able to hold Hanny Barcelos but just mix it in and just have just you know implement a whole MMA game into this fight so I do like this uh, fight for batting not on Kyler Phillips so I don't really like the money lines I could see Hanny Barcelos uh, rolling back the clock and winning this matchup but I like the overs I really like the overs in this matchup and I do like Kyler Phillips by decision at plus 205 that is how I'd bet this fight the overs at like minus 145 and Kyler Phillips by decision and our next fight tonight is going to be Ignacio Bahamandes taking on Ludovic Klein. Bahamandes 4-1-1 in his last 5. Uh, Ludovic Klein 2-2-1 two, two in his last 5. Bahamandes about a minus 200 favourite. Ludovic Klein about a plus 165 underdog. I'm going to have to side with the moderate favourite in this matchup, Ignacio Bahamandes. I feel like Ignacio Bahamandes will be able to win this fight and keep on the feet. Ludovic Klein, ever since he's gone to the UFC, hasn't really been able to implement that left high kick apart from his UFC debut. And I don't see him being able to implement that left high kick against uh, a massive fighter. If you look at the uh, height uh, advantage that Ignacio Bahamandes will have, six foot three compared to the five seven off Ludovic Klein, and I don't see him being able to take down Ignacio Bahamandes in this matchup. I think Bahamandes is the better fighter, the more skilled fighter on the feet, and I do see him piecing uh, Ludovic Klein up on the feet. But from a betting perspective, I really love, I love uh, Ignacio Bahamandes either by decision or by sub. I really love those two plays. Uh, I think sub was around plus 800 and I don't really know what his, what his decision prop will be but I'm going to look into them too uh, when they, when I get them on my books. So stay tuned for that on Sicky Dawes MMA on Twitter boys. And our next fight tonight is going to be Tanner Booster taking on Alaska Kmore. Ka- uh, Alaska Kmore 3 and 2 in his last 5. Tanner Boozer, 1-4 in his last 5. Tanner Boozer, a minus 180 favourite. Kmore, about a plus 155 underdog. I'm going to have to side with Tanner Boozer in this matchup. I just don't like the long layoff off Kmore in this matchup. You know, he is a decent enough wrestler, I guess. Not really good at anything in MMA. But now there's Tanner Boozer. I just see Tanner Boozer being able to, you know, implement more damage in this fight. But I'm not going to be betting this fight whatsoever. You'd have to basically say... You're going to die if you don't bat this fight. The only way that I'll ever touch this fight with my money. So, yeah, just give me Tanner Boozer by decision. I don't really like the overs. I don't really like the unders. I don't like anything in this fight. I don't like the money lines. Never in my life I would ever lay minus, like, 150 plus on uh, Tanner Boozer in my life. So, yeah, just give me Tanner Boozer by decision, I guess, boys. No idea about this fight, I'll be honest. This is just a terrible fight. How is this in the UFC, man? And our next fight tonight is going to be Galvin Tucker taking on Diego Lopez. Galvin Tucker, 3-2 in his last 5. Uh, Diego Lopez, 2-3 in his last 5. Galvin Tucker, a plus 110 underdog. Diego Lopez, about a minus 135 favourite. I'm pretty sure those uh, lines have changed, but yeah. I'm going to have to side with Galvin Tucker in this matchup. That's a very unpopular opinion after what Diego Lopez showed on his UFC debut against Mosvor uh, Evloev. I just feel like Diego Lopez is getting slightly overrated in this spot, man. I really do. You know, uh, the reason why it was very, very like hit or miss for Mosvor Evloev was because he was taking it to the ground against a very dangerous guy uh, on the ground in Diego Lopez. You know, Diego Lopez had uh, Joe Anderson Brito in a lot of bad spots, but I really do see Galvin Tucker not going to the ground in this matchup, and I do see him um, kind of just out uh, kickboxing Diego Lopez in this matchup this yes the layoff really does bother me and he's 37 years old and he's coming off an injury but I just like him in this matchup with his better kickboxing uh, very powerful hands you know Diego Lopez is no slouch on the feet either but I just like the 
just I like the striking batter for Galvin Tucker in this matchup, and I do see him winning a decision, getting a decision victory over Diego Lopez, as I think Diego Lopez is a very tough fighter. But give me yeah, Galvin Tucker by decision, just by out striking, out pointing him on the feet, just be just by being the better kickboxer with the more dynamic uh, striking. And our next fight tonight is going to be Dustin Jacoby taking on Kennedy and Zachuku. Uh, Dustin Jacoby 3-2 in his last 5. Should be 4-1, let's be honest. And Kennedy and, Je- and Zachuku 3-2 in his last 5. Uh, Dustin Jacoby coming in about a plus 120 underdog. Uh, and Zachuku about a minus 140 favourite. I'm going to decide with the underdog in this matchup, Dustin Jacoby. I think people are reading so much into his last performance against Azamat Mirzakhanov. Azamat Mirzakhanov, boys, I'm telling you, I bet Azamat Mirz- uh, Azamat in that fight against Dustin Jacoby and he is coming for that top five don't doubt me bro I'm telling you he's gonna come for that top five and he uh is gonna destroy Ozdemir but anyway uh Dustin Jacoby I feel like we'll be able to implement a more volume heavy uh striking uh fight compared to Kennedy in this foot matchup I don't really see Kennedy going for takedowns and being very successful and like winning minutes that way and kind of like winning the fight by just implementing wrestling and grappling I just don't see that being a uh, uh, a very you know plausible outcome I guess so yeah I think that Dustin Jacoby will be able to eat up that lead leg uh, by using his kicks by you know just being the more be- just a better striker the more technical striker and just implementing um more of a heavy volume uh, striking attack and winning on the judges scorecards that way so yeah give me Dustin Jacoby just to outpoint uh, Kennedy for the whole 15 minutes I have a bet on Dustin Jacoby already and I really like this spot for him. And our next fight tonight is going to be Jessica Andrade taking on Tatiana Suarez. Jessica Andrade, 3-2 in her last 5. Uh, Tatiana Suarez, 5-0 in her, la- her last 5. Jessica Andrade, about a plus 330 favourite, or underdog. And uh, Tatiana Suarez, about a minus 435 favourite. I'm going to decide with Tatiana Suarez in this matchup, but I would just like to say the line is completely off in this fight. If you look at uh, Tatiana Suarez's last fight, yes, it was up a weight class, but it was against Montala- Montana De La Russa, ladies and gentlemen. Montana De La Russa is complete terror, just, let's be honest, terrible at fighting. She's terrible, and she didn't really impress me on her long layoff. She kind of looked, I'll be honest, not the best, and Jessica Andrade is a different beast compared to Montana De La Russa. Yes, Jessica Andrade is 0-2 in her last uh, two fights, but I do see this being a massive step up in competition for Tatiana Suarez from Montana De La Russa to... Uh, you know, Jessica Andrade, but I do see Tatiana Suarez being the bigger girl here, implementing her wrestling, and I do see her getting a submission victory in that, like, second or third round. You know, Jessica Andrade against Aaron Plunchfield, she got submitted pretty le- easily, but apparently, like, the nip slip really affected her, and I rewatched it, and I was like, yeah, it kind of did, man. As soon as, like, her nip slipped, um, she, like, immediately got passed, which was very interesting, but she would have lost that fight anyway, let's be honest. But yeah, give me Tatiana Suarez to implement her wrestling here. I'm going to dominate the fight uh, as a whole, but I just really don't like minus four, uh, 435. I think it's like minus 400 now, but yeah, it's just not a great play in my opinion. And our next one is going to be Rob Font taking on Corey Sanhagen. Rob Font, uh, 3-2 in his last 5. Corey Sanhagen, 3-2 in his last 5. Corey Sanhagen, about a minus 270 favourite. Rob Font, about a plus 220 underdog. If this line keeps going, boys, I'm going to be betting Rob Font in this fight. Even though I think Corey Sanhagen is going to win this fight, I just see value in Rob Font. If you look at Rob Font, he's always outlanding his opponents and making it somewhat close before he gets dropped. But in this matchup, I don't really see that being a massive factor. You know, Corey Sanhagen's not the most powerful guy you'll ever see and Rob Font uh, yes he doesn't have the best chin but he is able to put out an insane output like as we've seen in that uh, more than Vera as we've seen in that uh, Jose Aldo fight he was able to land them in almost every single round and I do see that kind of being similar in this matchup I do see Rob Font being able to do tip for tat on the feet with Corey Sanhagen but I feel like Corey Sanhagen's more dynamic striking will be able to win uh, this fight but like I said boys I might have to play like a unit on Rolf Font at that price it just doesn't really make any sense when he's able to fight uh, pretty closely with everyone and kind of outland people uh, significantly significantly uh, so yeah give me a uh, Corey Sanhagen just to have the more variety on the feet and win it by a decision but 
like I said, he won't have to, Rob Font won't have to worry about getting KO'd. Uh, I mean, he could get KO'd or could get subbed, but it's like less likely than a Cheeto Vera or Jose Aldo who have more power than Corey Sanhagen in this matchup. But yeah, there you guys have it. There is my UFC uh, Nashville breakdown. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked it, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as it will help out the channel massively. Comment some of your best bets down in the comments below as it will help the channel out massively. But yeah, guys, uh, I will see you in the next one. Have a good day. Peace.